This is Brandon at Tailwater Fly Shop, and today we're tying the classic lefties deceiver. All right, so the hook we're going to tie our deceiver on today is a Gamakatsu SL12S 1X short in a size one. Um, I really like this bait fish style hook, uh, especially you know when you're tying deceivers. Um, there's really only about three tying points. Uh, if you want to add some flash, you might get to four or five, but you know, we're not going crazy with how many materials we're putting on this hook. Uh, and we're also, you know, we're not putting any weight or anything on this, so you don't need a lot of shank to work with. Uh, so I'm just going to start my thread, you know, kind of right out the middle of the hook and work back a little thread, you know, to cover the hook just to get that bucktail to stick. Um, and feathers just give them something to grab onto. Um, and so we're going to start our tie in kind of right here at the, the hook point. <clears throat> Our first material we're going to use is some kind of hackle. This is a Ewing Deceiver patch, so these feathers are actually kind of specially designed to work, you know, to be a bigger feather to work with a deceiver or something you might use a bigger feather for. Um, and this is just a classic white color here. <clears throat> so really just for the uniformity and, and swimming of the fly, you can see even on this, you know, um, this deceiver patch, you know, there's a few different size feathers here. So wherever you grab your feathers from, um, you know, whether you start in the in the back where the feathers might be a little thicker, or you start at the bottom where they're thinner and, and more uniform, uh, you just want to pick your feathers off of the same part of the patch. Uh, so I'm just going to start down here at the bottom just to keep it easy. Uh, and I'm just going to grab two. So one of the places I really like to throw a deceiver is off the beach. Uh, and I'm really looking for that kind of translucent feel um, on this fly. So, you know, some people, if they want, you know, if you wanted to have a little bit more profile um, or a little bit more effect, you might, you know, tie a couple more feathers on. And these are kind of skinny, so we might add a couple more anyway. Um, but I'm going to go about one and a half length or one and a half times the length of the hook shank again. Um, and right here with these feathers splayed out. So you'll notice when you pick these feathers off the cape um, that they have a natural curve to it. I want those feathers curving away from each other when I tie them on the hook. Uh, and I'm just going to hold them right where I want them and tie them both and at the same time, right on top of the hook shank. Uh, and you'll want to take just a couple of loose wraps and just make sure you're pulling these feathers back when you take some loose wraps over uh, because they will want to kind of turn on you some. Uh, so as long as you take that last wrap kind of loose, they'll sit on the hook shank the way that you want them to, uh, which is a little bit more uniform and, and kind of straight. <clears throat> uh, and then we're going to kind of advance our thread just a little bit. Uh, you know, we're going to add a couple more feathers in here. That one's a little, well, just a little bit more to that. So, and I will have these in my box, especially for walking the beach of all shapes and sizes. So I'll have some bigger feathers, um, you know, in the size ones and I'll, I'll tie these all the way down to like a size six. Sometimes you'll find some, some really small, you know, kind of glass minnows out there that those fish are feeding on and you got to have something uh, that's going to work for you there. So we're going to add just a little bit more bulk on the back of this fly. Uh, and once you start working with these feathers and, and understanding how you want your deceiver to swim, you can kind of eyeball that and understand what you want it to do, whether you need to add another feather, set of feathers or not. So uh, there we go. So we're going to add just a little bit more tail material to this one and advance our thread. We'll clean this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go about halfway up the shank of the hook and all we're going to do is cover these feathers uh, with bucktail. So the, the two colors of bucktail I'm using today um, are chartreuse and white. So um, again with a deceiver, you know, you, you can kind of make this any color you want. Um, so you can do, you know, people tie these in black and purple, they'll do these with an olive back or with a blue back to look more like a shad or, you know, something like that. Um, we're just keeping it classic white and chartreuse today, uh, but you can use any color you want here and, and you can even change the colors of the feather as well. So uh, we're going to start with the white. Um, with the white and we're going to basically I'm going to use as much of the bucktail as possible from the top half of the hook um, because this stuff is not as uh, hollow as the bottom of the half of the bucktail will be um, and I want this fly to sink a little bit especially off the beach so what I'm going to do is just kind of add a little bit of um, material to the hook on either side so basically on the bottom side of the hook is where I'm going to have the, the white at as like a belly Cheers to Adam almost killing me with light. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to add a, a little bit here, like kind of as a white belly. So what I'm going to do is divide the hook shank, the bottom half of the hook shank in two parts. So I'm going to add bucktail on the back side and the front side of this is just like 
um, two small clumps. And my first set of bucktail, I really am gonna make right at the length of the feathers, maybe a tad shorter. Uh, and so I'm just gonna kind of loosely wrap this in, get that bucktail set where I want it. And I'm gonna take another clump, uh, about the same amount, and do the exact same thing on the other side. So I have just a nice belly of white bucktail here, kind of covering up the bottom half of the hook shank and, and being around these feathers. And once you get everything kind of set in how you want it, you can give it a couple of decent, good tight wraps here in the back. And I'm just gonna trim all this out at once. So I'm gonna do the same thing, uh, except typically on the top, just because I'm not dealing with the hook point, uh, I'm just gonna take a slightly bigger clump of green uh, and just tie it all in at once. <clears throat> work. Um, just pull out some of that kind of under fluff there and work this over here. But basically when I tie this in, I'm going to start and just kind of roll it with my thread. And we're going to make this the exact same length that we had the white. Uh, and then I'm just going to flatten it out with my thumb just to kind of make sure I cover the whole shank of the hook. And you can rotate over just to make sure. Yeah, I'm good there. Um, and we're going to add a little bit more bucktail to this just to kind of give us some taper. But I'm gonna get that good and trapped down, trim off my excess. Um, and you'll see a lot of people, you know, you, you can end it just like this if you want a smaller profile. Uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit more clump, you know, a couple more clumps of bucktail and some flash here. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna tie my flash in kind of right on uh, the front side of this bucktail. So we're using crystal flash and pearl. And then I'm also gonna add some chartreuse under the, the top side of the the second clump of bucktail on the top. So um, the pearl, I'm gonna add just on the side of the shank of the hook like you might tie in some legs on a, a shrimp fly. So I'm just gonna rotate this over, tie it straight on the side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and just rotate it over. And you can kind of, before you really cinch this down, you can kind of manipulate, you know, exactly where I want to sit, um, want this to sit on my fly. Uh, and I'm not a big fan. Some people you'll see will tie their flash a little bit longer than the rest of their fly. I'm not a real big fan of that. I want my flash to blend into the fly, which is why we're putting it under another piece of bucktail. Um, it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Uh, and maybe it would be a good opportunity for you to leave a comment in the sections and tell us how you do it. Uh, but... For now, this is how I'm gonna do it. Um, and I'm gonna add my chartreuse in just on the top. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just double it over, but just going straight back. And just to give a little bit, like I said, I just want this flash to just blend into the bucktail. Um, and I'm gonna try the same thing. I'm gonna you know, cut it where it's just about the length of the fly. Um, and then all I'm gonna do is cover that up with just another light covering a bucktail. So I might even go a little less on this, um, especially if I want a smaller fly. So, and the other thing is I'm gonna take the tips here and make it just shorter than where I tied in the tips on the last last round here. So go ahead and get that trapped. Um, the other thing that, that you can do with this little trick here is by tying in the bucktail in two different parts of the hook, um, you're not just going to get a big jumbled mess of bucktail, you know, at the top of your hook, um, which doesn't really change how the fly fishes necessarily, but it makes it tougher to tie if you're dealing with a bunch of material, you know, right up here at the hook shank. Um, it just gives you a little bit more difficulty to deal with and you might have to, you know, deal with some glue and that kind of stuff that you may not want to. Um, <clears throat> so when you tie in, you know, half of your bucktail at the kind of the half of the halfway point of the hook and then tie in some more right at the top. Um, you just kind of avoid a little bit of that. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more green here. And again, we're gonna use our thumb trick. I'm just gonna work this all around the hook just to make sure it's all covered up the way I want it to be. Take just a couple of loose wraps just to get all that bucktail sitting how I want it. And then we're gonna trim out our excess. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you know, I'm just gonna tighten this down just a little bit. You can see I got some of this white here is kind of flaring out. Um, that's not necessarily gonna change how the fly fishes, but you know, if you care about changing how it looks, you can just kind of move this around a little bit how you want it. Uh, and this one is going in my box, so I'm not gonna put eyes on it. Um, my friend, you know, my box for my friends that come with me or my customers, uh, they get eyes on their flies because typically it helps make them a little bit more confident. Um, I've got plenty of fish with flies with no eyes, so we're not going to take the time today. And there is my take on the classic Lefty's Deceiver.